This gamey console claims it has 20,000 games pre-installed for only $160. Yeah, these are probably being sold illegally. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how you all doing? If you're new here, welcome. My name is Crazy Ken, and I've been seeing this gamey ad pop up lately. And suddenly after watching one Facebook ad, I now get a barrage of these similar ads from different companies. So today we'll take a look at the gamey ad, then we'll look at their social media and their website, then we'll buy a gamey and try it out for ourselves to see how good the user experience is. And then I'll also find out how this company is possibly staying profitable by selling a 20,000 game console for only $160. Let's dive in. This is the video ad. It's poorly made with crummy quality footage, bad cuts, and out of focus shots. <gasps> this is the one. This is Gamey. The ad claims Gamey is a portable console compact. Interesting grammar? Maybe it was a translation issue. And it has over 20,000 retro games installed. 20,000. Okay, that's a pretty big number, so we're gonna test that for sure. The ad also claims Gamey is compact and lightweight, making it easy to play anywhere, and it has a micro SD slot, allowing you to, quote, easily upload those games from your library. And one of the presenters says the quality is spectacular, although they don't sound too excited about it. Wow, I just want to say that this quality is spectacular. Then they unbox it and show a call to action at the end. Pretty short and sweet, right? So there's three claims I want to test. First, we'll need to test the hardware and software so we have a better understanding of the product. Then we can test the ad claims. Number one, the quality. Number two, how easy it is to add games. And number three, I want to see if this thing truly has 20,000 games pre-installed. And as a bonus fourth item, I need to investigate the legality behind this product because it seems just a little fishy. But before I test all that, I need to buy one, right? So let's take a look at their social media and their website. I clicked through to their Facebook page from the ad, and I found it amusing how they tried to make gaming-related posts. The cake is not a lie, celebrating Portal's unforgettable quotes. Well, it must have been very forgettable because you misquoted it. The quote is, the cake is a lie, not the cake is not a lie. Unless I'm suffering from the Mandela effect. Oh, and Space Invaders? Space Invaders? Whoever is running this page clearly doesn't know much about games. That's Galaxian, you idiot! Am I being too harsh on them? Nah. All right, let's check out their website. The main gamey website doesn't look too bad. Product images look clean, text is legible, and no annoying pop-ups like I've dealt with so many times before. All right, you get a thumbs up there. The top of the website reiterates claims made in the ad, but it gives more specific details on hardware, claiming a high-performance quad-core CPU and a Mali G31 GPU. Scrolling down, we get even more specific details, claiming a 64-bit A53 CPU, which we'll verify, and FPS perfect 60 Hz operation. Language is hard. Hey, I don't have any room to talk. Apparently, I can't pronounce vague correctly. Vague, vague, vague. I'll get there. Down at the purchase section, we get more specs, including an HD 640x480 LCD, providing a stunning high-definition gaming experience. Right. HD. Hey, wait a minute, did you see that? They have an email address on the website. Well, I'm just gonna ask them if the ROMs on this thing are legit, and uh, we'll see what they say. I'm not gonna outright say piracy yet, because I don't want to scare them away. And send. Now we wait. In the meantime, I'm sure you want to see how this thing works, and more importantly, how well it works. So you know what I had to do next, right? I went ahead and bought one. I selected an orange Gamey Pro unit and went to check out. I paid the extra $10 for the faster shipping because why not? And oh, okay, they're asking for a tip. Okay, sure, yeah, one bagel. So the total price was $109.98 and one bagel. Huh, I thought it was $160. Were they running a discount or something? I clicked pay now and boom, that was it. Holy crap, there was no post-transaction upsell? Hallelujah! Okay, so now we just wait for it to arrive. Piece of cake. Whoa, that was fast. Hey, thanks. Apparently I still have a small delivery man living under my table. Wait a minute, this isn't a gamey. Oh yeah, it's Factor. Do you see an oven or stove or any fancy cooking stuff back here? No, you don't. When you live 10 stories underground like me, all you have is that, a microwave. 
But that's all you need for factory meals. Oh, and a fridge. That's right, I said fridge, not freezer. These delicious meals are never frozen, so they taste amazing. Also, I'm a busy guy. I keep making episodes on all these cool tech things and I don't want to take time to cook. Factor fits into my lifestyle easily because you just vent the plastic, pop it in the micro, press a button, and boom! Your fresh, never frozen meal is ready in two minutes. No cooking, no meal prep, no trips to the grocery store. And here's another cool part. Factor meals are designed by chefs and dietitians, so they're not only delicious, they're also nutritious. Go to factor75.com or click the link below in the description and use the code computerclan50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Just heat and eat. Factor is that simple. So if you or someone you know eats food, go to factor75.com or click the link below in the description and use the code computerclan50. Okay, so here is the real gamey box. It's not as colorful as the one in the ad. My day is ruined. The box is kind of scuffed up too. I don't know, it looks kind of dirty, but uh, all right. Anyway, let's unbox it. Neat. We have the Gamey Pro itself with a nice smiley face button arrangement, a USB-C cable, a quick guide, <laughs> and an even smaller quick guide that you'll need an electron microscope to read, foam protective material, and two skinned cat faces. All right, great start. I love this part of the guide. How do I check how much battery charge is left? Oh, back to the main menu by pressing select. Reminds me of my buddy Alfred. Oh, L, L, your hardware vendor for support, your sister is halted. Now that the gamey is unboxed, let's take a closer look at it. But I can't do this alone. There's people out there who are way smarter than me in the retro game emulation space. So I assembled a team of three experts and one Ken. Lois Logan, fellow content creator and tech connoisseur. Zilch Fox, uh, Fox, and Brainiac Brent, my friend and Computer Clan Discord moderator. This guy knows his sh I sent them all their own units so they can tinker with them and report back to me. And the cool thing is what- Hello? Hey, Ken, you realize you sent me the 3,000 game unit, right? What? No, 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 they claim 20,000 games on the website. What are you talking about? Well, you bought me, and I'm assuming everyone else, a 32 gigabyte model, which is marketed as having 3,000 games. You need the 128. Uh, hang on a second. Son of a I can't believe I missed that! You managed to miss it all four times. Hey, I'm not very astute, okay? There! A 128 gigabyte model is now on your way. Us plebeians will stick with the 32 gigabyte models, because frankly, I don't want to give Gamey any more money. Thanks, I'm not gonna complain. Okay, now that that fiasco is taken care of, let's take a look at the Gamey hardware. True to the ad, the Gamey hardware is light and compact, weighing only six ounces. Though the controls look awfully familiar, don't they? Hmm, oh yeah, Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, how original. The front of the unit features a speaker, two joysticks, a D-pad, select start and function buttons, and YXAB buttons. On the right side is the volume with the micro SD for the operating system. On the left is the power and reset button and the micro SD for game files. On the bottom is the headphone jack, a USB-C port for charging, and a USB-C OTG port, also known as on the go, used for connecting other accessories like SD cards or flash drives with an adapter. Of course, it worked with Brainiac Brent's conversion technology, but not mine? What the f- On the back are the L1, L2, and R1, R2 triggers slash bumpers, and a label. Pow Kitty RGB 20S? Ah, is that the true name of this unit? Turns out, yes it is. Pow Kitty sells a variety of different consoles, and you can get the 128 gigabyte RGB 20S for only $75? Wow, Gamey is selling these things at a huge markup. And that price includes the games. I asked the chat just to make sure, and apparently the $75 model comes with 25,000 games pre-installed. Holy frick, that's even more than the gamey claim. I'm really starting to feel ripped off now. I'll try not to think about it. Back to the hardware, the gamey display is 640 by 480. I was actually surprised by the quality. Colors look good, and it's bright enough for indoor use. The angle of view is also not too shabby. And for certain tasks, like scrolling through menus, the 60 hertz refresh rate works great. Everything is smooth. When the rest of the hardware and software can keep up, that is. But we'll uh, talk more about those issues in a second. This quality is spectacular. Oh boy. All right, let's bust it open. Respectfully. 
Inside, you'll find a blue printed circuit board, 12.95 watt hour battery, and a Rockchip RK3326 system on a chip. This is an ARM based chip which uses the Cortex 835 architecture, not A7 like the manual says. Which I think is a good thing because the A35 actually consumes less power generally than the A7 and it has higher performance. And to top it off, it's a 64 bit architecture. The A7 is 32 bit. And I'm wondering if the A53 spec on the website was simply a typo because they just switched the numbers around, maybe? <laughs> However, the Mali G31 GPU spec is correct. So that's the hardware. Now, onto the software. Let's boot it up. Uh. Okay, so it took several minutes to start up the first time, but all the subsequent boots were actually much faster. Weird. But I'm sure when we dig into the software, we'll find out the reason why. Ah, I bet the email team replied to me. Let's take a look. They said the preloaded games are emulator versions and they are exactly the same as the original ones we played back then. Here's a partial list of the games included on the 32 gigabyte and 128 gigabyte. I just want to clarify, emulation means the game's ROMs, read-only memory files, are not running natively on the gamey hardware because they're not compatible. Instead, they run in emulation, which is special software that simulates compatible hardware so the ROMs think they're running on an actual game console. So now that I've warmed them up a little bit, I'm just gonna straight up ask. Isn't that piracy? Or are the games licensed? And send. So while we wait for another reply, I want to dive into the gamey software and the games themselves, but they sent me that spreadsheet. So I wanna take a quick look at that first. Okay, this is interesting. The 32 gigabyte model has 2,331 games. Yikes, that's under the 3,000 claim on the website. And the 128 gigabyte model has only 5,249 games. That is way under 20,000. But the email says partial list, so I guess I can't treat it as gospel. And I bet the person who wrote that email was very cautious about the words they picked. Once the 128 gigabyte unit arrives, Logan can break everything down and we'll find out how many games are truly on the system. While we wait, I added up all the categories on my 32 gigabyte model and I totaled 4,089 games, which is weird because that means the gamey advertisers actually undersold it on the website, claiming only 3,000. That's not something you see often in a Scambuster investigation, so now I'm really curious to see the 128 gigabyte count. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the software. Gamey boots into a main menu where you can scroll through various video game platforms. Pressing A selects a category and pressing B goes back a page. If you wait five minutes or press select, random videos demoing the games will start playing. And while they're playing, you can press the next button on the D-pad to go to the next video. And it's hard to read because the instructions are microscopic, but pressing start opens universal settings like theme, language, and VRAM limit. This menu also has a restart and shutdown button for the gamey. Overall, I think the software is pretty user-friendly once you just memorize a few button combinations to press. So gamey, I will give you Another thumbs up? Well, this is weird. You're actually scoring some points in my book. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the universe is not balanced. Something's gonna topple this over, right? Right? So now let's dig a little deeper and see how this software works under the hood. Metaphorical hood, it's not a car. The game he uses software which is standard in the retro game emulation community. ArcOS is the operating system which all of Gamey's software runs on. ArcOS is based on Ubuntu, a Linux distro, which is based on Debian, another Linux distro, which uses a Linux kernel at its core. On boot, a program named Emulation Station launches. This is the emulator front end, or presentation layer, which allows users to select games to play. When a game is launched, RetroArch launches, which is an open source and cross-platform front end, and it contains emulators. RetroArch simplifies everything by making emulation tasks easier. So instead of dealing with a whole bunch of different controls and settings across multiple different programs and multiple different emulators, everything is just in a nice, tidy, all-in-one package under one roof. And it's really nice, especially for beginners. And let's not forget about shaders. Those are fun, right? RetroArch has tons of shader presets. For instance, you can add borders to your games. I also like adding CRT effects, but this poor gamey can't keep up with that. Or if you're really old school, you can give your game a nice film grain look. Now let's talk about cores. 
When you launch a game from Emulation Station, RetroArch will then load the appropriate core, which in this context is a game emulator. So when we launch this Nintendo 64 Monopoly game, RetroArch loads a specific core, an emulator named Parallel N64. When inside a game, press down on the two joysticks to open the RetroArch menu, which gives you an absolute crap ton of settings, and I'm not going to pretend to know what they all do. The default menu user interface is RGUI, which has the simple green and gray look, but other menus like XMB are available out of box. Also, Logan discovered why the game he took so long to boot on the first time. It was running a shell script. If we examine the first boot.sh file, we'll see the script is running multiple tasks, including resizing the file system. After the tasks are complete, it reboots and then continues as normal. After that, all of the boot sequences were only 24 seconds, so not bad. All right, let's see if the gamey guys replied to my email. Nope, nothing. They replied to the first email in about three hours, but now it's been days and they're saying nothing. I just think that's a little suspicious, but I'll give them a little more time. Now, it's the moment I've all been waiting for. Let's test drive this thing for real and see how good the user experience is. The first thing I want to test is the quality. I went through the lists and marked some favorites. All right, let's see, what should we do? Ooh, hey, Strikers 1945-3. Okay, this game got a lot of my quarters at the arcade because I sucked at it. Oh no, that's not a good sign. Oh crap. Okay, that one doesn't want to work. Uh, oh, how about R-Type? That's another favorite from my childhood. So this one's running on MAME. Uh, that one I've tinkered with long, long ago. And eh. And it didn't work! Okay, we're batting zero so far. <laughs> That's just great. Uh, R-Type 2? Second time's the charm, I guess? Or, I guess we're on the third now. Hey, this actually seems to be working! Okay, um, A. Okay, A is fire. Charge the laser. What? No! Okay, so, sh Okay, we need a different approach. So my team and I flipped through a bunch of games to see what works and what doesn't. We found games which launch and don't crash, but performance is a mixed bag to say the least. Sometimes it'll be fine. Like, thank goodness Pac-Man works, right? But you know, that game's not really demanding anyway. Also, just for the record, I wanna say this. Pac-Man is not in the arcade classics category. Despite him being in the picture and him being in the logo, he's not in there. He's actually in the Neo Geo Pocket Color category. Simpler games like Arkanoid, where there's less movement and less drawing on the screen, play with good sound and picture. But then some other games, yeah, not so much. Oh yeah. Uh, that's not very good performance right there. <laughs> wow, this is like, unusable. <laughs> yeah, so, quality, eh. I'll say the screen is good, and the controls don't feel bad either, but with all of the crashes and the lag, I'm gonna say big thumbs down on the quality claim. By the way, you can watch more unscripted gamey test footage on my Patreon. Check it out. All right, number two, how easy is it to add games? Well, the Facebook ad said it's easy. And for Brainiac Brent, it was. He copied a Nintendo DS zip archive, which he already had on hand, into the NDS folder, and it just worked. Zilch had good luck too. This time he had to unzip his SimCity archive so he could copy over the .sfc file, but when he did that, it worked immediately. So if it worked for them, it should work for me, right? <laughs> Wrong! I put Arkanoid on here. I have a ROM that I used successfully on MAME on Mac OS X. But I put it on here, and I can't get it to launch from Emulation Station, and I can't get it to launch from RetroArch. So I have no idea what I'm doing wrong. But at least it worked for Zilch and Brent. So this claim is kind of true. It really depends on your skill level. But ultimately, I'm gonna say the jury is out on that one. And that leads us to the final claim. Does the gamey actually have 20,000 games pre-installed? Let's find out. All right, Logan, give me some good news here. Hey, Ken, good news. The 128 gig is here. Tell me it doesn't have 20,000 games. It doesn't have 20,000 games. I knew it! It has 29,178 games. Am I losing my mind here? I thought these gamey guys were scammers, but 
it seems like they're underselling their product and I can't call this a scam buster if there's not much of a scam to bust. Well, this might help. I wrote a program to check the hashes on the 128 gig card and found it has 6,908 exact duplicate files by hash. So the real count is 22,270. Okay, I mean, that's a little more reasonable. Also, I should mention, this program only detects exact matches, so if there are several ROMs that are similar but have slight differences for region, for example, that ROM won't even report as a duplicate, so the true game count is probably even lower. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, thanks, Logan. This is good info. Yeah, no worries, Ken. You alright? Logan, did I lose this one? I just don't really have many bad things to say about the gamey. Uh, don't worry, you'll you'll get them. Don't forget, Gamey is charging a 213% markup for something that you can get directly from Palkitty. Uh, it's pretty scammy in its own right. True. And all that aside, I think you know what you need to talk about next. Yeah, um, that's all I have left in my arsenal, so I'll give it a shot. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Now have a good one, Ken. Yeah, well, I guess now that leaves us with one more important thing we have to talk about. Yes, piracy, everyone's favorite subject. This is a legal gray area, especially in the context of retro game preservation. But despite maybe a few exceptions I'm not aware of, the gamey ROMs are not officially licensed, meaning they are being installed and sold illegally, or at the very least without consent from the original publishers. Even though we don't have a black and white response from the gamey team regarding piracy, which I'm not surprised about, we can reasonably conclude that most, if not all, of the ROMs on this thing are pirated, merely by factoring in cost. The 20,000 game unit sells for $160. For all intensive purposes, we'll round 29,178 down to match their advertising claims. And just for simplicity, we'll ignore the cost of the hardware. So, for gamey to break even, not make a profit, just break even, they'd have to obtain each video game license for 0.8 cents. And that is extremely improbable. In a real world example, for Arcade 1UP to remain profitable, they sell their cabinets for $500, and those only have about 14 games on them. But the games are officially licensed, and they make that very clear in their website description. And cost isn't the only problem. Not every developer and or publisher is going to agree to a licensing agreement. Nintendo, for example, is very strict about what platforms their games run on. And they've been known to be quite aggressive with lawsuits and cease and desist letters in the past. And on top of that, we're not even factoring in royalties. Every licensing deal is different, but generally speaking, video game licenses and licenses in general involve a flat fee, and or a royalty. A flat fee is a one-time purchase of said license, and royalties are recurring payments made per unit sale. For example, a dollar per unit. And that can be over a specific period of time, or it could be forever, in perpetuity. You brought up the word royalty. I didn't. You did. So there is no way Gamey is making a cent on these units, unless they're not paying for the ROMs, which is very likely the case, which is piracy. Don't copy! Don't copy that floppy! So I think that's the big nail in the gamey coffin. Consider this scam busted. <laughs> Frankly, I don't want to support gamey financially, and I don't want to have all of these pirated ROMs in my lair. So I'm going to try to return this unit to them. And if they don't accept, I'll just erase the card, because the hardware should still be fine. And if there's any significant developments with this, I'll post updates on my Twitter and my YouTube community tab, so stay tuned to that. And subscribe for more episodes coming soon, like my next one that's about this <laughs> Light 16 camera. Man, this thing is freaky looking. Catch the crazy and pass it on. Was that the bite of 87?